Hello viewers, welcome to another edition of Tech Tips. My name is Vizier and this week we will be talking about the clash detection. What the clash detection does is it detects any categories clashing within your walls and creates openings to permit those clashing members to pass through your wall and for your wall panel to frame around those openings to support that clashing element. Now, in order to use the clashing element, you simply select the clashing element and the wall is clashing again. You can select multiple walls and multiple clashing categories. Now, before I actually get into the clash detection, these clashing categories could be made in the project, just like they are right now. So they're modeled within this project. Or they could be modeled within another project and simply linked in using a Revit link. They're linked in there. And we could use those links as a clash detection. They could also be IFC files, in which case we simply need to open the IFC files in a blank project, simply opening a blank project and opening an IFC. Once we open the IFC, save it as a Revit project. So we save the IFC file as a Revit project and then link that Revit project into our main uh, model to use for clash detection. Now we simply select the clashing categories and the wall is clashing against and run the clash detection. The first method would be without using utilizing any rule sets, we're simply going to create a clash detection. Now in this window, you simply select your intersecting categories. In our case, there's structural framing, making sure that is checked. If we want to, if we had a link where we would select the whole link, it might have generic models in there, ducts, structural framing. But we just wanted to perform clashes for structural framing and ducts, for example. We can simply uncheck all of these other ones, and it's essentially going to ignore those when doing the clash detection. Next, the transaction interval. It is going to, if it will normally do 500 clashes, it is going to do 250 at a time, take a breather, do 250 more, just to speed things up a little bit. The angle tolerance and parallel tolerance is if your members, clashing members, are slightly skewed at an angle, it will consider them as a square opening, along with the parallel tolerance, if there's something going parallel to the op to the wall, it is going to consider it as an opening as well, as long as it's clashing against it. Next, you want to make sure that this use link for intersecting is checked if we're actually using the links. Hit the blue check mark. It is going to ask you for any tolerances for your opening. Essentially, we don't want it we don't want the beam or the clashing member to fit snugly in that opening. We want to leave a little bit of rough opening space. In our case, half an inch on the left, right top of the member, and just none on the bottom because we want to sit right there on the sill that's going to get created. How we want to frame the opening, we might want to frame with the default marker or a marker that we created our, our, ourselves. Let me hit the blue check mark, and you will notice that an opening was created in the wall. Now, you could have done the clash detection with or without a panel on the wall. If there is a panel in the wall, like our, in our case, simply regenerate it for the framing to reset and you know create the opening members, the header, the sill. Or you can simply create it, and it is going to consider those openings from the start. Now, in order to speed things up a little bit, we can go ahead into our marker text and create a rule set where our openings are being considered, our tolerances are being considered from the start. Simply open up your marker types, go into rule set, project, rule set, open framing, and we're going to simply duplicate the default, call it demo, and we're going to go inside that demo workbook. Now you will notice it already has a uh, rule set in there. We're simply going to modify that initial rule, and then we're able to add our next few rules if we wanted to. Simply double click that initial rule for that rule to open up. We're going to modify the width. We want it as long as it's from zero 
the four feet, we want to frame it with x in in matter of x. If it's we could go ahead and add another rule set saying if it's four feet to ten feet, for example, we want to frame it differently. And if it's ten feet to twenty feet, we want to frame it a different thing. Our clashing detection, we want to make sure that whatever our clashing category is, that it is included in this list. In our case, structural framing is. If we wanted to add, for example, generic models as well, if we want to add a mass, we simply add it in this list for it to be considered in the class. Next, we could skip this, in which case it is going to ask us once we create the class detection. Or we could do it from now and simply add the half inch tolerance on either side except for the bottom, just so it doesn't have to keep on asking us. We're going to go ahead and frame it with the default marker. Again, it could be whatever marker of your choice. Now that we created this marker, we can simply select the clashing member and the wall it's clashing against and simply run our interference command again, this time making sure we select the demo rules that we just created. And now when we run the clash detection, it is going to do it in one loop, not ask us for our tolerances or anything, just create it for us. Now what happens when we have two beams real close to each other like these ones are? We might want to merge these openings cause, just because we won't have enough room for two king sets to be right there in that little gap. So we might want to merge this as one opening with one header and one sill for both and a king set on either side. And in order to do that, we simply run the class detection like normally. You simply select the two intersections and the wall it's clashing against and run our interference. This time we will check the merge openings and simply input our merging options. So for example, again, we want to select our rule set, demo right over here that we created, along with some tolerances. Essentially saying if I have an opening within, let's say, one eight inches to the right of, if I have an opening within eight inches to the right of this main opening, it is going to merge them together. Same thing for if it's on the left, on top, or in the bottom. As long as it falls within that tolerance range, it is going to merge them into one opening. Simply hit the blue check mark, and you will notice that both these openings are merged into one bigger opening. A simple matter of regeneration would frame around these two openings that I just created. Thank you very much, guys. This has been Tech Tips. See you guys next time. With that regeneration complete, and there you have it.